There are, of course, a lot of wonderful benefits to minimalism. Um, but the thing that I've, I've noticed the last sort of six months, maybe 12 months of watching so many minimalist uh, YouTube accounts, um, reading lots of blogs by minimalists, is the thing that I really hate about the um, online minimalist community is there are so many minimalists who <clears throat> seem to be preaching uh, certain rules and dogma to people. This idea, for instance, there's a lot of stuff online about you need to, you know, to be a minimalist, excuse me, you need to reduce all of your stuff and only own a hundred items. And then once you only own a hundred items, you then reduce it to 80 items. And, and there are people saying, you know, to be a minimalist, you need to get rid of everything so that you can fit everything just into a bag, you know, a big rucksack or whatever. That's not really minimalism, okay? That is um, a sort of bastardized, extreme version of minimalism. It's 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 a dogma, and it's setting these rules that I really detest about about a lot of um, online minimalists. This idea that you know, if you own 120 items, you're not as good a minimalist as somebody who owns 100 items. I mean, I've had that myself. I own a lot of books. And I have a collection of fountain pens and bottled inks because these are the things that I'm very passionate about and I love a great deal. And I've had people say, Mark, you can't possibly be a minimalist because look at all of your books and you've got all these pens and bottled inks. And, you know, you're not a minimalist because a minimalist wouldn't would have, you know, one pen and one bottle of ink. And a minimalist would have, you know, a, a Kindle or, a, or an e-reader so that he wouldn't have lots of books on shelves and stuff. Well, that's not what minimalism is. Minimalism is about owning the things that really matter to you and that you're incredibly passionate about. I mean, you might have, you know, a wealthy person, for instance, who lives in a big house and he's got a thousand books in his library, but he could still be a minimalist. Just because he owns a thousand items of, of something doesn't mean he's not a minimalist. And I'm seeing increasingly more and more this kind of, some minimalists are sort of introducing almost this sort of superiority into their videos where it's like, I'm a better minimalist because I've got less stuff than you. I'm a better minimalist because I got rid of my bed and I sleep on the floor on blankets and you've got a nice double bed with a duvet and whatever. If you want to get rid of your bed, and sleep on the floor in blankets, that's wonderful. Um, if you're the sort of person who can do that, but it doesn't make you a more superior person or a more superior minimalist to somebody who sleeps in a double bed. Um, if you have a, a Kindle or an e-reader with all your books on, so you've just owned this little piece of equipment, it doesn't make you a more superior minimalist than myself who owns lots of actual physical books. So that's that's something that I'm I've noticed more and more that minimalism it seems to be becoming it's like a lot of things online you know a lot of people are trying to introduce these very strict rules and dogma and the point is that every human being is different and we all have different needs and wants and desires and passions so to follow somebody else's rules of you know you must own a certain number of things you must eat a certain diet you must do this this and this um, is nonsense. A good minimalist, I think, is somebody who has the mentality of a minimalist, who practices minimalism, but a good minimalist is also somebody who follows their own path to minimalism. Because following your own path and not following somebody else is the only way that you'll probably be happy.